And now, Jackpot at the Three Pulse Motel by Susan Mushmore and Craig Lankiller as your noir storyteller, featuring Susan Muchmore as Roxy Tidewater, the dark-haired, doe-eyed desk clerk at the Three Palms Motel, just outside of Las Vegas, and the younger sister, too. Rosie as Gloria Tidewater, a bleach blonde beauty who's looking for a good time. Lisa Helen, a young, sassy, hat check girl who works out right at a hotel right outside of Las Vegas. Tommy White, Wally playing Tommy White, a hard drinking, traveling salesman who fancies himself a ladies man. Hmm. And Lynn Nash on sound effects. Welcome to Lux Mystery Theater. Tonight's story, Jackpot at the Three Palms Motel, takes place just outside of, of Las Vegas, where a traveling salesman goes all in, only to find that fate doesn't always deal a straight flush. Tommy White, traveling salesman, card player, and self-appointed ladies' man is hoping for a good run at the Vegas casinos, but the desert wind covers his windshield with a grit, desperation, and despair. The heat from the dry, dusty parking lot hits him square in the face as he heads inside a motel that has seen better days. Roxy, the day manager, leans against the check-in counter while older sister Gloria sits in the corner, lazily flipping through a fashion magazine. I need a room for the night, doll. One with a telephone and a cold shower, and not so close to the road. Sure, we got that. Six dollars in advance. Interested? I'll take it. Is there a liquor store nearby? Sure, right next to the filling station. Hey, handsome. Interested in a little action? Maybe you'd like to buy me a highball. How do you like that? I barely set foot in town and broads can't resist me. Before I even give you ladies the pleasure of my company, I got to part some money, people from their money. Tony picks up a bottle of whiskey at the liquor store on his way to the casino. He tosses back shot after shot. That night, Lady Luck takes a shine at Tommy until he decides it's time to quit while he's ahead. Tommy stumbles up to the hat check window and claps eyes on Helen. Hey, doll, when do you get off? What's that? Oh, great. Another mug hoping to make some time with me. Tommy tosses her a gambling chip. I get off in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Why? You looking for someone to get into a little bit of trouble with tonight? Doll, I got the dime if you've got the time. No reason to go right back to your hotel room so soon. Say, mister, my eyes, they're up here. You shouldn't dress like that in public. <laughs> it's just my work blouse. Well, it's almost my work. Well, it's a little skimpy. <laughs> okay, doll then maybe you shouldn't wear a body like that out in public. Come on, baby, let's blow this pop stand. I got something to celebrate. Tommy and Helen head back to the Three Palms Motel, where Roxy is still leaning on the front desk. Hey, honey, your friend around? I'm having a little party in my room. Thought maybe she'd like to join us. Sorry, A, she had other plans. I'm going to need another six bucks anyway for you and your friend here. But she's family. She's, she's my sister. No, really. Yeah, sure. Whatever. It's still six bucks. Give it or get. Tommy hands it over and they tell him to his room. They fall in the door and land hard on the bed like a sack of wet laundry. After a few smooches, Tommy passes out. Helen, 
eyes his wallet on the bedside table and helps herself to a couple of Benjamins. Through bloodshot whiskey goggles, Tommy spies what she's up to. Oh, no, you don't, sweetheart. Put it back before I slap you silly. Hey, you can't talk to me like that. I'm just not some other, like, bimbo, you know. Oh, no? Mr. Get Away! Ow! 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 Stop it! Stop it! Ow! Oh! Hey, hey, quit faking. Come on. It was just a slap. Wake up. Damn it. Hit her head on the bedside table. Just my luck. I got a dead dame in my room. Nothing like a dead body to sober a man up. Tommy looks around, empties his garment bag, and shows Helen's body inside. He wipes her fingerprints off the table, then checks to make sure the coast is clear before popping the trunk of his car. He rolls the heavy garment bag into the trunk and slams it shut. Tommy heads over to the motel office. Hey, sugar, I need to check out. I got a sick kid at home, and I need to help out the wife. You don't say. Well, guess the party's over. What a champ. See you next time, sluggo. Tommy spots an abandoned gas station down the road. He pulls in behind, shuts off the engine, opens the truck, and grabs the shovel. Uh, good thing I keep a shovel in the truck, just in case I get stuck in the sand. Gonna believe it was, a, I gotta believe it's gonna be, it was an accident. There's no way I'm gonna do time for some dizzy day. Tommy digs a shallow grave, drags the heavy government bag into it, and shovels sand on top of Helen's body. Helen, Tommy, heads down the lonely highway, and life goes on for him back home, except... Whenever he hears a police siren or telephone ring, his stomach drops a little. Hello? What do you mean you hold the trump card? Who is this? What are you talking about? Oh, really? Or you'll do what? Yeah? How much? It's nearly midnight when Tommy arrives at the Three Palms Motel. In his trunk is a satchel filled with $100 bills and the shovel. The bell rings as Tommy walks in. Roxy, how you been, baby? Say, anyone really been looking for me? Yeah, somebody has, and you're looking at her. Game over. What the hell are you talking about? There was blood on the carpet. Uh, I know what you did. If you want to keep me under wraps, you better uh, hand over the dough. You're bluffing. Roxy pulls a 38 revolver from under the counter and points it at Tommy. Does this look like I'm bluffing? I've been kicked around all my life. Now it's my turn to do some kicking. Oh, okay. I don't want any trouble. The money's in this satchel. Take it. As Roxy takes the satchel, Tommy sees his chance and yanks on it hard. Roxy falls and strikes her head hard on the counter. Uh. Tommy fails to notice the quiet opening and closing of a car door just outside as he cleans up the crime scene. He carries Roxy's motionless body outside to his car, pops the trunk, and quickly rolls it in. Tommy hops behind the wheel and heads for the abandoned gas station. He grabs the shovel from the trunk and starts digging. Suddenly, he hears a sound and turns to see Roxy holding a large rock in her hand. Bet you didn't think I was alive. Baby, you got one hard head. This shovel ought to take care of it. Just then, two shots rang out. Oh! Oh, where did those come from? Tommy sees two crimson spots on his sweat-stained shirt. He looks up and notices Gloria for the first time. You fathead. It's me, Roxy's sister, Gloria. I hitched a ride on the floor of your backseat, and nobody messes with my little sister. 
You've got that wise guy? Tommy collapses and falls backwards into the shallow grave like a puppet with strings cut. Come on, Roxy, help me shovel this dirt over him. You got it. Then let's get out of this hellhole. Tommy White learned the hard way that Lady Luck is a fickle mistress. And so it goes. Join us next week when Luck's Mystery Theater gives you a peek into the life of another ordinary citizen.